Greetings, welcome and welcome and greetings. I am uh, Sexy Face Chisel Jaw. If you're listening to this, you're going to have to take my word for it. If you're watching it, then you can only agree. This is the Knowledge and Ignorance podcast. You may be able to hear the howling winds of denying outside. It's somewhat like a... Um, yeah, kind of like a horror movie vibe going out there. I don't know why it's gotten so much more windy recently. I am no weather expert. But what I am an expert in is the behaviour of you. And what have you been up to? Now I'm talking about you in the UK in specifics. Specific in specifics? That's not even proper English. But you didn't come here for an English lesson, did you? You're acting awfully Chinese, aren't you? I've seen you. I've seen you on the Facebooks. People I once knew. Now I know no more. Curtain twitches. Putting up pictures and videos. Look at these people. Look at these kids. In the park. Hanging out on their phones. Not maintaining any distance from each other. Tell me who these children are. I need to know who these children are. Spread the word. Give me names. We'll report them to the local government office. Very communist of you, I have to say. Now this kind of mindset is troubling to me. I know you're all kind of scared because you don't want to get all coffee, coffee and boo-hoo. But the fact is, um, when shit is over, are you going to maintain this sort of mindset all the time of just being... You know, being so open just to do what everyone says and to be a curtain twitcher and uh, reporting everybody doing something minding their own fucking business I get it, I get it some people ain't playing ball but come on you're going to have to look at yourself and go shit, what have I become? you don't want to become that thing, man why are you becoming that thing? What's, 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 uh, what's the deal with that? What's the deal with that? Hmm? What are you up to? Think about it. They're on your phone. <gasps> look. Look at them. They're congregating their children. They're enjoying their time of school and have been hanging out with each other. Who are their parents? Maybe the parents should be hung. Publicly. Public hangings. I mean, for as long as it goes on, how crazy are you going to fucking get? You know, uh, how much more up for, like, being proper loon are you going to be? This is what we want to know. We? Who are we? The non-nutters out there. Me. What has concerned me about this whole situation is that um, in my last podcast, I did say that maybe uh, this was going to kill Clown World. This was the death of Clown World. The final nail in the coffin. Well, ah, I'm bloody wrong about that, I'm afraid. Oh dear, oh dear, how I can be wrong. What I have been right about is most other things, which I'll get into later. But I've been slightly wrong about this. Why? Why, might you ask? Well, I am right in saying that, you know, globalism appears to be dead. Um, this is the death. This is the death of the EU as well, which all the, which all the clowns sort of clapped along with like you know like the happy useful idiots the useful corporate whores that they are do you know what I mean the bottom bitches of corporations and neoliberalism just there going yay I love massive global governments yay clapping and clapping honking their you know honking their honked noses <laughs> you know like like clowns do squirting water out of their flowers and Dodging custard pies, the usual sort of clown behaviour. But I thought, you know, I mean, in terms of celebrity clowns, I think, well, yeah, as once what we knew about celebrity culture and her, and their power and influence, and their relevance to all our lives, I think that uh, that head is on the chopping block, and um, there's only a few strands leaving the neck connected to the brain vessel that we call their head. How much brains is inside that brain vessel? Uh, Not a lot by the looks of it. 
So yeah, that's that's dead. But the clowns, shit, bruv. Uh, unfortunately, they seem to be maintaining their supreme influence, mainly because I <sighs> I've been a victim of naivety, uh, maybe optimism. Maybe my optimistic outlook was naive. Just because I thought we needed some big world catastrophe to bring us all together again. Um, much like the Second World War. We needed something like that. Something to put everything into perspective. And things have been put into perspective. Because all the silly things that the clowns want um, have, have you know, been exposed as just being ridiculous first world problems that no one should be concerned about. So that has happened, and obviously the climate clowns um, have gone to ground. Now they're protesting um, from their bedrooms. In fact, they, they are having a digital strike, is what they said they're doing. They're striking digitally. Um, I don't know how that works, because there is no work and there is no school, so I don't know how you're going to go on strike for something that isn't happening. It's kind of weird. Sort of like being sacked. You know, you get sacked and then you go, right, I'm going on strike. And then you sort of striking outside your former employers with a placard, you know, and shouting at everyone that still has a job there who, you know, crosses the picket line, call him a scab. You fucking scab! Like, you don't work here anymore. Yeah! And what? It's kind of like that, you know, you, you, you can't really strike from something that isn't happening. It's like, uh, I remember there's a great line in Superman 3, uh, set by Richard Pryor, when he says, well, you, you can't lose something that you never had. You know, you can't strike against something that doesn't exist at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Well, I protest to that. Well, you can't. Oh. Oh. Back to the circus for me, I suppose. But they're still trying hard. Trying to mean... Some people are trying to maintain that there is a link between these two things. Between... <laughs> A, a killer virus and, um, <laughs> and global warming. I don't know how. I don't know how they can maintain that. Um, but to piss all over their silly narratives, anyway. I'm not even going to entertain what they've been saying, actually, because um, you know time is limited, and I want to get to the point. But um, to, to piss all over that, I mean, you know, in, in general, the thinking is that you know when it's hotter and more humid. Um, diseases spread less, so global warming is a winner. Uh, this is a winner. And of course, because of the skies clearing and the air being cleaner, because if there's been less traffic in the air and on ground, it um, turns out uh, CO2 emissions have plummeted uh, way quicker than was anticipated. You know, they wanted to plummet the world into the darkness that we're experiencing now, and we're seeing how that plays out, and we're like, no, we ain't into that. Um, but it won't take as long as uh, you uh, told us it would. So, you know. It's got to be hard for them as well. Because, you know, their doomsday cult. It's based on this thing that the world's going to end in 12 years, you know. You know, the doomsday cult of the whole thing was like, you know, it's the end of the world, it's coming in 12 years. Again, find a god, repent your sins. It's coming. Um, and I was like, oh, this has come. Oh, this is the one you want to actually be worried about. This is the one that people were talking about for a long time, saying, would you one of these? Um, and this might not even be the big one. So, yeah, this this doomsday cult is, is kicking your ass. You know what I mean? When you're setting up your doomsday cult and trying to terrify people into submission and um, put pressure on world governments, you should have thought about a much more terrifying prospect that uh, would come about. And this one is more terrifying, just because... People don't like disease, you know, like, you know, no one likes AIDS, do they? Uh, even, what's that on my chin? Is that chocolate or a, or a cat? No, oh, chocolate, good for me. You know, no, no one likes AIDS, even bug, even bug chases. Uh, AIDS is the one that is the least, is the least popular. Um, I'm probably totally wrong about that, as uh, some bug chaser would tell me, you know, go in my forum and see all the AIDS people. I'm like, all right, okay, okay, I'm listening to you. Jesus, can you hear that wind? There's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing I can do about that wind. And also that hammering outside, because it appears that everyone's just building the shit out of stuff here in Vietnam. They just love building. 
Um, I've never seen so much building going on in my life, and they're just building, building, building. I mean, look at them. Up, they're, they're very, uh, I wish you could see in what a precarious position they are right now with those bricks. Up as high as I am. Building, building, building with this wind. Um, so if you hear sirens, you will know what has happened. Anyway. So... There is a victory for certain types of clowns. But unfortunately, I was naive in thinking this would bring us all together and that people would work along side by side and everyone would sort of drop their agendas. No. Because these motherfuckers just see opportunity. Now, there is opportunity in everything. I have stressed that, you know, there is an opportunity in this. There's a positive opportunity in this. That is to reclaim power back from the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. In terms of we can bring manufacturing back through micro manufacturing, this is an opportunity that can happen in the West. We're already seeing people manufacturing new things, diversifying their businesses to help uh, during this crisis. I've, I've seen uh, an article that I've shared on my social media post about you know a kid who had a free three three D printers and he's making face guards for NHS workers from his three D printer. That is the basis of micro-manufacturing. Look it up. This is your future. This is something you can do from your very home. Taking manufacturing back. Our reliance on China is too much, and this has become evident now. So that's a positive thing. Another positive thing is that we, um, you know, we've realized that we don't need to go into the office to do a lot of our work. So an end to horrible commuting and, you know, that takes a lot of time off your day. You know, that gives you a lot of time back from your day. That's a beautiful thing. There's been many beautiful things. But unfortunately, you know, these are the good opportunities. You know, a good opportunity is to diversify your business, you know. There's um, a place where my friend works that usually they build airplanes. Now they're building ventilators. Diversification. An opportunity. It's good. But there are always those sneaky, sneaky, red-nosed, fluffy-haired, spinning bow tie-wearing motherfuckers. The clowns. And these little bitches are bad opportunists. They give opportunism a very dirty name. Because now it's like, how can we twist this to suit our own horrid, horrid agenda. And the media. The media have just been on a rampage. The media are to blame for a hell of a lot of stuff and a hell of a lot of stuff during this. The, the panic buying that, w that was going on in the early stages. The media has sort of gotten to a very desperate stage now whereas all the most terrifying stuff has happened. Um, <clears throat> you know, we are in the scary phase. It's very scary for a lot of people, but no, but they, they just, so they're running out of fear and they're like, well, we need more fear. What can people be more scared of? Because fear wouldn't make people stay indoors. Compassion made people stay indoors. It was like, you don't realize there's a bigger picture thing going on here that if you're infected, you infect someone else and they might fucking die. It's not all about you, you prick. You know, fear couldn't make, fear couldn't make a lot of people stay indoors because people still ain't staying indoors. They're still not complying, which is good. I mean, it's bad, but it's good for the human spirit. It's, it's bad for your nan. But, but, you know what I mean? But the fear, they couldn't, they couldn't use fear in the way they wanted to. And now they've gone, oh, the young people, they're not scared. Right, let's make them scared. And now it's like, another baby dies. Most healthy person on planet Earth. He jogged 14 hours a day. Oh, he mainlined broccoli. He snorted matcha. You know? He boofed wheatgrass every day. World's healthiest person. He has a medal for being world's healthiest person. He's so bloody healthy. His health is contagious. When he breathes near people, they become healthier. Well, he died. That's right. He was only 22, the world's healthiest person. He died from the coronavirus with no previous complications. Do you understand how scared you should be right now? 
And there you have it. That's all they've got left. Oh no, they've got way more to come. Um, I'm sure they'll start stoke, stoking up a nuclear Armageddon with China soon. Because um, they'll run out of ideas the longer this thing goes on for. The fear machine is going to have to keep trying to make us scared, 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 scared. I went through my little scared phase. And that's because I kept consuming the media. Because I was like, I just want to keep up to date about my own country. And I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. Because I look on Facebook and all that says is everyone's okay. For once. So those clowns are still going fucking strong with their bullshit. But other clowns. Other clowns. Using this as opportunity. One of the problems you have with a whole situation like this is that after 9-11, as I told about the, uh, you know, the new age of fear and also the golden age of conspiracy, well, we might be entering phase two of the golden age of conspiracy. This one is mm, golden. Mwah. It's 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 gold. And I've constructed my own conspiracy theories based on everything that's going on. But now, you know, I mean, we know the obvious ones. You know, the biological weapons, ideas, you know, the whole situation between America and China. And look who's getting affected the most. America, apparently. Although China, there's probably a million dead in China for all we know. Do you know what I mean? Um, they probably brought some of them back as weird clones with animal penises. I mean, God knows what goes on out there. It's crazy, isn't it? We all know those theories. Uh, but of course, the 5G theory is um, becoming ever so popular now. Now, I know some people who believe in the 5G thing really fucking believe in it. And there are people setting fire to 5G towers. Now, a few years ago, well, back at the uh, tail end of 2018, I did sort of debunk the whole 5G thing as it started to raise its head in hysteria. Um, yeah, the 5G thing is just, just uh, a bit silly. If you just look at any data um, or any records that you're going to work out, there's, there's, the correlation is it's just, well, it's just not there. I'm not going to entertain him, but that's not going to stop people. It doesn't stop David Icke telling us that the lizards from our space have, um, you know, put all these towers around everywhere to make us infertile and, and cough up blood and shit. I mean, obviously, you know, that's going down. Now, in terms of the idea of David Icke and him as a person and him being a sort of beacon of... Because the man does say some interesting and poignant things. But then he does also say complete lunacy. Do you know what I mean? So he's... Um, there's a lot of figures out there like that. Like Dr. Umar Johnson. Dr. Umar Johnson sometimes says some things that I think, yeah, he's got a very good point there. And then he'll say, you know, that AIDS was created in a lab laboratory in Fort Lauderdale to kill all the blacks. That's right. Even though black people, you know, used to um, kind of support the stigma of HIV being a homosexual thing. So what, did they all turn gay too? Was that part of the plan, Mr. Umar Johnson? <sighs> You'd have to ask him if he can take any time away from his 25 wives. I can spread misinformation too, just for jokes, by the way. Um, but the point is, is that people's suspicions are valid. And I always say people's suspicions are valid. You should always listen, always hear people out. Because the problem is, is with statistics. I'm always very weary of statistics. Weary? Well, they make me weary, but I'm wary of them. That's what I was supposed to say. But I am right, saying I am weary of them too. They do make me so weary. I am so weary from statistics. But they are, look. I mean, all you have to do is watch, you know, a few episodes of The Wire, which is the closest thing to reality going out there as any dra dramatization I've ever seen. When it's, you know, dupe in the stacks. Dupe in the stats. That's what it's always about. We know this goes on. Violent crimes. How can we reach? There, there are reports out there. You can, you know, you can just go look up a few. There's reports out there of, um, you know, city police departments manipulating the statistics to suit the narrative. 
you know, if you let's let's give an example. So let's look at let's just use the wire as an example in the city of Baltimore. Let's just stay on the let's just not go too far away from this so we all get confused and have to call our mums because we're so confused. Let's not do that. So say the city of Baltimore, on average, according to the wire, and according to you know, and it still is the same now. You got an average of like 300 murders a year. Now, if the previous year it was 350, 300 murders, you want to see a downward trend on the graph. It's a downward trend, so the murder rate's down. But the murder rate probably really is 390, because it's actually gone up. Now, how does that happen? How do you do that? Would you just, you know, pull the bullets out of people and touch them up and just put them on sort of weird hydraulic puppetry machines and just have them walk around going, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Is that what you do? Or would you just not tell the family and say, no, they've gone to live on a farm with the dog? I mean, what do you do? How do you do that? You're saying, this is crazy. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Well, I'll tell you how you do it. It's very easy. And this has been done. These are real life examples that are coming out of my mouth. You, you can, well, if someone gets shot, say you're involved in a drive-by shooting, and there's two people turn up at the hospital uh, and they die. You know, they might die from sepsis. Or they might die from complications. They might die um, complications during surgery. They might die from a respiratory failure. They might have suffered brain damage or a hemorrhage to the brain. There's all kinds of reasons why they would die. It's not necessarily they were shot to death. The gunshot was the, you know, was the springboard for their death. And if you're very clever, or not even too clever, you can manipulate those statistics to look like that it wasn't uh, death by shooting. You know, how many murder, how many shooting murders did we have this year? Well, not that many. Most people died of sepsis or a broken heart. This is how you can manipulate statistics. It's very easy. You can say, you know, back in the day when mobile phone theft was through the roof, in the good old days, there was loads of mobile phone thefts going on. The fact is everyone knew that if you fucked your phone up, it was easier to get a replacement one if you just say you were mugged. There's so many people going to police stations. I know plenty of people who did. Just go to the police station and say, yeah, I was mugged. By who? Someone in a hood. You know, in the noughties, every mugger was wearing a hood. And just say, there's a geezer in a hood. Probably a teenager. All right, okay. And depending what area you live in, they'd either be white or black. You know what I mean? If you lived in a very white area, go, yeah, some white boys. Lived in a heavily black area, go, yeah, some black boys did it. All right, okay, yeah, we've heard about them. And then it's done. That's one way to manipulate statistics. Robbery can be manipulated. Because there's different terms for loads of different things. It's like with the statistics when they say, you know, 80% of hospital admissions are due to are alcohol related. Because of alcohol abuse. Now you can say that, but then, you know, there'll be car cra- you know, hit and runs, car crashes, uh, violence, whether it's domestic or street violence. Or People beating stuff up in, people beating people up in the club, you know, and they'll be testing them how much alcohol, got, alcohol, 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 how much alcohol they got in the system. If there's just a bit of alcohol, then it can be attributed to alcohol. Doesn't don't have to necessarily be blind fucking drunk. As long as there's enough in the system, then they can jot that down. And go, yeah, that's part of the statistics. And that's what's going on now, because you don't know how different authorities are doing it. Especially in Europe and America where they have been inundated with cases. Now maybe that's because more people are being tested or more people are coming in out of fear. Whereas in other countries it's less. We don't really know. What we do know is a mess. Not like a, a, a massive mess, but it's a mess in terms of there's just too many people coming in ill. <clears throat> Now, how many deaths do you attribute to that? Because I've seen reports of people saying, you know, there are people out there who would have died this year 
because we have a death rate of just naturally, people would have naturally died. You know, due to whatever, whether they were old, infirm, already had a pre-existing condition or illness, they were terminally ill, and they were going to die anyway. They die from birth, they test positive for corona, then they're dead because of coronavirus. These will be attributed to coronavirus deaths. And when you're, and there's many reasons to manipulate the statistics like this to have a, a, a larger death rate. It's not necessarily um, to make people more scared or so forth. It can just be because it's just easier. And it's not necessarily an evil thing. It's because, you know, if you are overrun with complications, you know, if you're overrun with sick people that you don't know how to deal with, and you've got all this paperwork to fucking deal with when you need it on the front line, like, pfft. Corona. This makes it easier, doesn't it? There are many reasons. Now, some will believe that there's a fear tactic going on. That actually, the number of deaths has been hyped up in order to take away our civil liberties. Now, I am one who can definitely buy into that. Because it's not necessarily, you know, oh, they, they created this virus. That's what David likes to say. They, the lizard men, they were in Wuhan in a lizard laboratory, all, all lizarding about the place, you know. Fucking, they were just, they were just binging flies and shit. Do you know what I mean? Being lizardy as fuck. Do you know what I mean? Just these dirty lizard bastards creating this evil disease. Why? So everyone has to stay at home and give up the civil liberties. It was done deliberately. So, no, that's not how this shit starts. Everyone's an opportunist. When the opportunity arises, and they go, oh, we can fuck with people now because of this. You know. Everyone will seize the opportunity to put across their agenda. More censorship. That's going on. The extension of what authorities can do to you. That's happening. These are opportunities. And there are people out there questioning it. And you've got Candace Owens on a fucking rampage going, yeah, well, how come there's like all these people dying in, in New York and like, you know, um, suddenly that's all corona deaths, even though the, 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 you know, the statistics are kind of higher. Uh, you know, there are more deaths. But there is a decent point. So you're getting a lot of that in America going, yeah, right, not this many people are fucking dying from it. Are you, are you fucking crazy? Because they think, and it's been used to take away people's rights. And yes, it will be used to people's advantages. I've seen a video of, uh, you know, the people of color in America. All these lovely terms they use in America. We are people of color. I was like, what, uh, whatever. So you're colored people. Brilliant. We've gone full circle back to the 70s. Saying this is affecting us more. So we need more ventilators in our communities. We need more testing in our communities. Everyone's fucking jumping on the opportunity train going, no, we're most effective, we're most effective. Whilst all the old people are just kicked aside going, Arr! you know, we know what happened to the old people, even though everyone at first said this is a disease for old people that's going to kill them dead. Well, you know, you know how people reacted to that. But they left them dead in an old people's home, didn't they? That's how much they gave a shit about that. They just left them. Yeah. Well, you're old. Bye. You know, that was nice of them, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, you're probably thinking, God, why are you joking around about this kind of thing? What else are you going to do? It's so fucking horrendous, you have to make a joke about it. Just going, I'm not sending my mother to an old people's home in Spain. You can fucking guarantee that one. So that's how the clownery is going around. People using this shit to their advantage. Using it against each other. Bipartisanship. Left versus right. And I thought they wouldn't do that. The clowns would fuck off. But I was wrong. Everyone sees us on the opportunity. In all sorts of horrendous ways. There's a lot of narratives being pushed online. I've seen videos of people spread you know you see one video of someone saying we are unprepared we're all dying i haven't even got the right equipment to go operating and i see another video of a guy in new york just going everything's fine here it's all hype he's outside a hospital and it's completely it's, it's just quiet as fuck 
So I've been in here every day, there's nothing going on, it's not as bad as they're telling you. There you go. Left versus right again. Here you go, here you go. It's like, right. At a time of misinformation, this is not what we fucking need. For your fucking stupid little agendas. Because we've already been sold out by the World Health Organization. Or as I now like to call them, the World Ho Organization. Because they are the bottom bitch of the Communist Party of China, okay? The Chinese Communist Party. The CCP's bottom bitch, the World Ho Organization. Which is run by an Ethiopian fucking communist. I mean, Jesus, and what, they've turned us all into curtain-twitching communists who are reporting on all our fucking neighbours? Okay, well, we're not having any of that, thank you. No, thank you. And some of you dumb motherfuckers are donating, donating money to the World Ho Organization, whilst other motherfuckers, like the America, like the America, the America said, no, we're cutting it in half, thank you. You bunch of bumper clats. Best thing that could have happened. Just goes to show. Those clowns and their fucking misinformation telling us not to wear masks when all of Asia are wearing masks and they're seeing such a slow upward curve. They've already hit the fucking curve and it's just on a fucking flat line. And I wonder why that is. And I told people, wear your masks. Wear your masks. Where are, in fact, no, where are your masks before you fucking wear them? No, 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 it doesn't work, yeah, because we know everything. Why? Because the World Ho Organization told you? Brilliant. Well done. And remember what they told you before? No, everything's fine. You don't need to close your airports to China. That's racist. How ridiculous. You see how this kind of clownery got us into this fucking situation in the first place? By... by caring about people's fucking feelings over people's life. Your grand's dead because you didn't want to offend the Chinese Communist Party. Well done to you. I hope you're happy. How ridiculous. So all the clowns need a shit. Look, the clowns are still going. The World Health Organization. Sorry, I mustn't call that. World Ho Organization are still going strong. Spreading their fucking nonsense. Don't listen to us. You know. They're the biggest clowns on planet Earth. And everyone's still looking up to them. I say no. Because I told everyone to take this more seriously. In a podcast I did. On the 25th of fucking February. I said you need to take this shit seriously. Spreading clown messages. Spreading messages. Spreading all your memes about influenza and flu. Oh, it's not that bad. Don't close the borders, you bloody racist. Now look at you. You can't go outside. Because the police told you to, because you're going to die. You're talking about influenza. Spreading around memes. You motherfuckers still think that, you know, the Russians had a part to play in Brexit and the election of Donald Trump. That's what you believe whilst you're spreading your fucking influenza memes. And you're not wearing a fucking mask because of this so next time listen to me because you're a fucking clown well, you're, you're not even a clown you're a clown's assistant you're a clown's understudy you fucking lunatic what are you doing now you're twitching at your curtain taking photos of kids putting on social media going look at them let's kill them this is what you are it's now for you it's now time for you to shut up the climate clowns are shutting up the celebrity clowns are shutting up. But you haven't shut up yet. It's time for you to shut up. And remember what part you played in spreading misinformation. No more misinformation. Because misinformation is just being spread by us now. This is not good. Bipartisanship information spreading that is false is not good. Because we've already had it thrust upon us by the fucking real bad guys. The people responsible for this bullshit that we're having to suffer through. It came from them. So don't start pushing around and going left and right and going <laughs> and round amongst each other when we need to be unified. Okay? Because there's the big common enemy has always been out there. It's always been out there. I keep saying this. I've been saying this for the longest time. When are you going to fucking listen? It's always been out there. Whilst we've been rowing about Brexit for years, totally distracted, what we've been going on about gender-neutral 
bathrooms and the teaching of homosexuality to our children. Whilst we've all been completely brainwashed, our children have been brainwashed into the thinking it's absolutely acceptable to shut people down because they don't like what they say. To accuse people of being racists when they're actually just trying to be practical. We've allowed this shit to intercept us. To intercept us? <laughs> Infect us. We were already infected for a long time. Don't let this infection spread anymore. And you don't, you motherfuckers. You were all distracted this whole time. Distracted with absolute bullshit. And I said at the beginning of this year, I'm going to stay away from focusing on that bullshit. It's just there to be laughed at. Because these people are fucking clowns. They might have a bit of clout, but this will hopefully get rid of their clout. But they're still scrambling around. And these people are apologists for totalitarian, murderous regimes. Never forget that. These are the people who happily tell you that influenza is worse than what your grand died of. These are the people that said, Oh, don't close the airports to the Chinese. Grandad's dead. Yeah, but you're racist. Yeah, but my granddad's dead. I'm a racist with a dead granddad. Never forget. It's shut up time, okay? It's shut up time. There are many positive things that can be done. We can bring manufacturing back to our own countries. We can stop being so reliant on these powers. Our reliance on these people is what got us here in the fucking first place. Okay? Some of these motherfuckers need to go back to the rice fields and push plows. That's what needs to happen. Because they're fucking tyrants. The tyrants, we're, we're, we're being oppressed by... This is, this is the result of fucking pure tyranny. And the shutting down of information and censorship. So if you ever supported censorship, if you ever supported the narratives that are being pushed, if you think that it's the Russians that have been pushing all this bullshit, you're an idiot. Because you were too distracted to see what was actually going on. Okay? Some of us who pay attention, knew this shit was coming. <laughs> and here it is. So welcome to the world we told you about. Now what are you going to do about it? Start listening to people like me. Because you're in a whole heap of shit. We're going to take the fucking power back. That's what needs to be done. There are many positive things that can come from this. you just got to pay attention. And I will keep sharing everything that I find and everything that I discover. So I want you to come on this journey with me. That's what I want you to do. We need to think about the future now. There are many great things that can be done. We just gotta start thinking different now. Now the first thing you wanna do is go to my website. The link is in the, all descriptions. Sign up to my, <laughs> listen to me plugging. This is true though. Sign up to my main list. Sign up to the notifications. I'll follow all my social medias and I'll be sharing exactly what needs to be done. I'll be sharing things to inspire you, things that can help you build towards a better future where we're independent and we don't have to go through this fucking nonsense again because we're afraid of offending a superpower. Fuck them. This is what Vietnam did. They said fuck them. On day one, Taiwan said fuck them. Whilst the World Ho Organization won't even acknowledge the existence of Thailand as an independent place. The one place that has dealt with this the best, in the best way. 100% the best. And we weren't told what they did by the World Ho Organization because they're too busy gobbling Winnie the Pooh's penis. Well, fuck that shit. Fuck them. Go look at Taiwan and what they've done. Look at Vietnam and what they've done. And the number one thing they did was tell the clowns to shut their fucking mouth and we're closing the border. No one from China's coming here, thank you. Goodbye. That was it. They said, fuck feelings. Which is what we all need to do. Fuck your feelings. I don't care. But I like driving really fast without my seatbelt on. It helps with my anxiety. Fuck you and your anxiety. Drive slow, put your fucking seatbelt on. But no, you're a prick. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself.
this clownery must stop. End of discussion. Look it up, micro manufacturing. You, your neighbor, your friends. You can all make, get a 3D printer. You can all make the one little component that all goes together to build the bigger thing, whatever that thing is, what people need. You know, other people can do the more, you know, the more technical sides of it, you know. But you can all band together and you can start up, a, you can start up your own fucking factory based in your houses and then have one final assembly point. You start off small and then work out big. This is how the revolution happened in China. This is why they have so much power and influence. It's because of basically starting off on a model like that. But they didn't have the technology that we got now where you can do it from a fucking bedroom. Look into it and look into the blockchain because the blockchain will help us take away the power from the fucking clowns, the banking clowns, the clown, the clown corporations that are ABC, such as YouTube and Google. These fucking clowns. These apologists. Apologists for tyrannical regimes. People who prance around underneath a blanket of, of caring and openness and freedom of expression who actually want you to shut your fucking mouth if they don't like it because the advertisers will be upset the Chinese will be upset these are these pricks Look underneath all the videos that talk about COVID-19. It'll be underneath this one, I expect, if you watch it on YouTube. And there'll be a banner there by the World Ho Organization. And we have to listen to these pricks. Literally everything you'll see will just be that. The World Ho Organization. Here's our tips. Yeah, what did your tips do for us? Fucking clowns. they got to go. There are some dickheads out there that have got to go. They have got to go. Like I said, if you were one of the complicit, useful idiots that has helped pushing all the propaganda, you got to go too. Where? Back to planet dickhead. Back to planet dickhead you go. There's plenty of people. There's a rocket ship being built to take everyone back to planet dickhead where they fucking belong. They all need to go back to planet dickhead. Say the Thai foreign minister, or was it the Thai health minister? Actually, probably the whole fucking government of Thailand right now, and the president. All the silly things that they've done. Prancing around and saying, well, you know we've handled this really badly, and uh, it's been an absolute catast catastrophic mess, and uh, yeah, we've made everything really confusing, so one knows exactly what's going on. Well, you're not allowed to criticize that on social media, because we'll throw you in prison. So please don't criticise us for doing really badly. Do not point out that we've done really badly. You're going to jail. This is another example of a colossal clown dickheads who are getting in that rocket ship and flying back to planet dickhead. Whoever that Swiss moron is, who is the, um, you know, the vice chairman of the World Ho Organization or whatever his official title is, the one who's been asked questions about Taiwan and then cut the call off. And then when he came back, said, sorry, oh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. And then he cut the call off and said, no, let's move on from that. He's getting in the rocket ship going back to planet dickhead. He's got one of the fucking primus seats at the front, along with the head of the World Ho Organization, whatever that dickhead's name is. He's at the front too. Now, the Swiss guy, he's mainly going to be at the front of the rocket ship back to Planet Dickhead because it's not actually um, his fault. He did want to talk about Taiwan, but he's such a dickhead because he's a boomer and he doesn't know how to operate Skype properly. That's why he's going in that rocket ship. That's a joke. He's in that rocket ship because of who he is. We all know who's going to be sitting next to the fucking pilot. He's a lovable bear that loves honey. He's going in the rocket ship too, back to planet, dickhead. And you, and you, who constantly spreads propaganda around, you, the ones who say, oh, that's fake news created by Russian robots to, to make sure that we don't stay in the European Union. You, you're going to planet, dickhead too. 
because Vladimir Putin is just our, is just this generation's Gaddafi. He's the world pantomime villain, except he loves being it. In fact, he nominated himself to be the world's pantomime villain because he fucking loves it. It makes him giggle. He's just probably the biggest troll on planet Earth. A mysterious troll. Now, you were pushing propaganda created by the CCP, saying, oh, influenza's not that bad. Oh, you're a racist. You were pushing all of that, saying, no, what's the big deal, you racists? It's not as bad as the flu. You were making this face. <laughs> you were doing that. You, you're the ones criticising people for voting Brexit, and yet you're spreading propaganda that's actually led to the deaths of people. Possibly people you love. You're a useful hoebag. You're a useful, useless idiot. You're going in coach to Planet Dickhead because you can't sit in first class with the proper dickheads. You're not even a proper dickhead. You're going in coach. You're in the economy seats with the crappy meals. You'll get served last. You'll have to, you'll have to eat whatever slops left on the menu. You're off the Planet Dickhead. I hope you enjoy yourself there amongst all the other dickheads. Consider Planet Dickhead like um, as an experiment. I, I don't want to make this comparison, but that's the only thing that springs to mind. Like when they created Liberia, you know, for all the re, and they repatriated slaves from America and gave them their own state in Africa. It's that basically, but for dickheads, you know, Black to Planet Dickhead, you know. Um, maybe you'll make a be better go of it on Planet Dickhead. You know, than, uh, than the former slaves in Liberia did, because that did turn into quite a mess. And although George Weir is president, I'm pretty sure still, um, which is fantastic. We've always wanted a football president <laughs> somewhere in the world. I think it's been a dream of a lot of people to have that. I think a lot of people were going for Pele, but um, they got George Weir just as good. Anyway. You're going black to black. You're going black. You're going back to black. No, you're going back to Planet Dickhead. You probably haven't been there, but your ancestors came from there. Okay, think of them like the the um, you know those weird aliens in Scientology that we all uh, their spirits possess. We uh, their spirits are inside all of us or something that like give us nightmares and shit or and depression. It's like that kind of thing. You you've got the essence of Dickhead running through your veins. You're a descendant of Dickheads. See you know what I mean? You know, you like Jewish tribes that have been on on the run for thousands of years. They can trace their trace their roots back to um, you know Judea. It's kind of, it's like it's one of those it's one of those type of situations. But you you know you have dickhead running through your body. You're the only you're the only minority group that is acceptable to persecute, as far as I'm concerned, because you're dickheads. You know, you're bigger dickheads than the dickheads running around there. You know coughing on things and licking toilet seats for clout and getting coronavirus. You're worse than them. Because you think you're better than them. Therefore, that makes you worse. So off the planet, dickhead. Whereas us, the regular folk, are going to stop squabbling amongst each other and just ignore all the bullshit. I would implore you to just forget about all the statistics that have been thrown at you. No one's got time to pick through them to work out whether they're, how factually accurate they are right now. There's too much going on. There's too many other things to be considering. So forget the statistics. Just ignore them. Just do what you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to do. But incorporate wearing a mask and thinking of a longer term plan. That's what you've got to do. You see, the Chinese have a 30 year plan. The Chinese are a paradox of people. On the one hand, they have this 30 year plan where they're seeing so far into the future, they know what, you know, little kids know what they're going to be doing in 30 years' time. They've already planned for it, they're already doing exactly what they need to do now to be there in 30 years. Very admirable. A fantastic trait. You need to be thinking like that. But on the other hand, the Chinese do have this other thing, this is why it's a paradox, where they think in, in the cultural aspect of it all, it's, it's better to make, you know, like $1,000 today by ripping someone off than it is to build a successful business relationship that lasts a decade that can make a million. That's also something in their culture. Like I said, it's a paradox. Uh, it's a very confused, you know. Think about the confusing times we live in now where we don't really know what the fuck's going on. 
when left and right are just have completely opposing ideas and a completely different vision of the world that we're just in the middle going, what is the fucking truth? That's a very, very Chinese thing. So think about the reality you live in and think about what you haven't been paying attention to all this fucking time when you were out there going, oh, Russia, was it? Shame on you. Come on, man. Russia, Russia are just on that thug shit. They're on that thug shit. Look what they did in Salisbury. That's just straight thugging. It's like, pfft. Do you know what? I don't like that guy. Go kill him. With what? I don't know. Something horrible. What weird... What weird nuclear chemicals have we got lying around? All right, well... Okay, we've got some another shock. Oh, yeah? What's that like? It's horrible. Yeah, go on. Go do him with some another shock. Put it on his spoon in pret a uh, That's what they're doing. They're not doing massive cyber attacks and fucking shit right up. They're out there covering up stuff that's going to lead to this kind of catastrophe. You foolish, foolish idiots. Oh, it's the Russians. Cambridge Analytica, this is what's important. Shut up. It's shut up time. It's shut up time. It's time to let the adults start speaking from now on. Because we're not going to let these clowns make a fucking comeback after this. That's for sure. This is supposed to kill the clowns. And yet they're out there running havoc. You know, running a riot. Spreading disinformation turning this into a political game. This is, should be just about human nature, which is what the climate crisis is supposed to be about. It's, that's just a political fucking game. It's not even about a crisis that affects human beings. It's whether it affects the right human beings and the right people are on board and about mass taxation. That's not what this shit should be. Don't let this shit get turned into that because it is getting turned into that. Where you got nutters running around just like not believing in anything. And who can blame them? Who can fucking blame them? The way the media and the way the clowns fucking behave. I don't blame people for setting fire to 5G towers. And they're going, well, why are we being kept at our will? I don't believe it's real. I don't really believe that many people are dying. Because the statistics are probably being warped. Misdiagnoses. We don't even know enough about this. Already. Still, we don't know enough about this all this shit going on. I don't blame you. But just chill out, man. You just got to chill out. Toe the line for a bit. And ride it out. And come out stronger at the end. With a better brain on yourself. With a plan. It's time to start planning. Start planning. And make sure that we win this team. And who are we? We are not clowns. The, you know... The not clown people. That's who. That's who needs to win. Anyway, if you like all of this, check out my links. Check out my website, please. We need to support more creation that is away from the big conglomerates such as YouTube. Um, YouTube, I just view as a a server. It's a server. It's a hosting space that I use that is unlimited. I don't care about the adverts. I don't care about the recommended. I want people to go to my website and consume my content there. And I think more people are going to start doing this in the future. This is, this is the future, is to move away from these horrible, horrible, massive corporations. Not all corporations are evil. I really hate that fucking idea. But there are some pretty pooey ones out there. And it's not big oil companies. It's tech companies in fucking Silicon Valley. They're some of the bloody worst because they're sellout hoes. They're whores. And we can't be relying on whores. So go to my website. And if you're a creator yourself, create your own website. I've done mine with Weebly. Also, I'm going to make it a lot better as I get more people going there. But it's still good. You should be doing the same, man. We need to move away. And back to the little mum and pop. The little mum and pop model of the internet. That's what we need back. You know, let's get away from all this shit. Let's have more variety on where we spend our time in the internet. You know? Anyway, it's been a pleasure for you, for me. This is my specific civic duty. Out.